Okay, so for your pendulum lab, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a pendulum, some uh, weights, a protractor, some string, uh, a tape measure or a ruler, and you'll also need a stopwatch. Okay, for step one of your lab, it says construct a pendulum which is about 20 centimeters long by tying one end of the string to a clamp and the other to a pendulum ball or mass. Um, so the mass for this um, control here, we have as 50 grams, okay? And for the pendulum length, it's at approximately 20 centimeters. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's about 20 centimeters right there. So what you're gonna wanna do next is um, pull back the mass a small measured angle. So to do that, we just take our protractor, okay, we kind of put it on to where we're going to pull it back. And I'm going to pull it back about 20 degrees. And when I do that, I'm going to time um, how long it takes for 10 swings. Now, just remember one swing is from where it goes back to the original spot. So that would be one swing. So after I pull it back, Okay, a certain measured angle. We're gonna count, we're gonna time it for 10 swings. So one, two, three, all the way to 10. And we're gonna stop the stopwatch. So you guys are gonna you guys are gonna time this. Okay, so again, 20 centimeters um, length, 50 gram mass, and I'm gonna pull it back about 20 degrees. So get your stopwatches ready. Bring it back 20 degrees and go one more time and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Okay, so that was for procedure part three. This is your control trial. You're gonna going to um, you're going to compare everything from this control trial here. Okay, we're just going to repeat the control trial again, just so we have a consistent time for 10 swings. Okay, so your time, if you want to take the average of the first time you timed it to now, you can. So again, this is the same as the control from earlier. Take my protractor, pull it back approximately 20 degrees, and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Okay, so now we're going to leave the pendulum as it is. We're going to move on to step four of the procedure. Okay, it says repeat step three, but significantly change the angle, um, which is also the amplitude, two times. Okay, be sure to keep the same pendulum ball or the pendulum mass. We have, we haven't changed it. And we have the same length. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing. You're going to time for 10 swings but now we're gonna change it significantly. I'm gonna pull it back to 40 degrees. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, get your stopwatches ready. Let's measure that one more time and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, stop record that time. We're just going to do it again, maybe get an average. Okay, so pull it back to 40 degrees. And go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be maybe taking the average of both of those times that you got there. If you want the period, remember, make sure you're getting a time for each cycle. Okay, you don't want the total time, we want the period. You can even find out the frequency for that. Okay, okay, we're gonna move on to the second part of part four, or step four. We're gonna change the angle one more time. Now I'm gonna change it, we're gonna go all the way to 60. Okay, all the way to right here. Okay, get your stopwatches ready, and go. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Okay. Record that time that it took you that it took the actual pendulum to do that. From there again, you can find the period and the frequency of the pendulum. We're gonna do it one more time so we can take an average. Take my angle, so go to 60 and start timing now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Okay. Take the average of those two times, okay, and then you'll find you'll be able to determine, okay, um, whether or not the amplitude had an effect on the period of the pendulum. Okay, we're on to step five of the procedure. Okay, I've changed now, we're changing now the pendulum mass. So previously we had 50 grams. Now I've put on here a mass of 100 grams. I've tried to keep the same length of the pendulum the same, approximately 20 centimeters. What we're going to do is we're gonna see how the pendulum mass affects the period of the pendulum. Okay, we're gonna go back, we're gonna do two trials. Okay, one for um, 100, maybe we'll switch to 200. But the amount of amplitude that you're gonna use will be just 20 degrees each time. Okay, so we can see how the mass affects the period of the pendulum. Okay, so measure it up here. Go back to the 20 degrees. Okay, start recording when I release. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we'll do it one more time. Again, stop at the ten. Okay. Twenty degrees and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay, we're gonna now change the mass to 200. Okay, make sure you get an average of those two times. Okay, we're gonna change the mass to 200 now. Okay, we've now changed the pendulum mass to 200 grams. Remember the control was 50 grams and the first time we changed it was 100 grams. We're gonna see, um, we're gonna count the uh, number of cycles again, up to 10, and see how much, uh, see what we can get for period. Okay, so we're gonna pull it back at an amplitude of 20 degrees. Okay, and you're gonna start to time when I release it, and we're gonna count to 10. Go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, stop. And we're gonna do it one more time, and we're gonna get an average. Make sure, again, you're recording these values down. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Stop. Okay, so that's going to be the total time, and you're gonna find the period and the frequency from that for the 200 gram mass. I'm going to move on to the last um, variable change, which is going to be the length of the string. Okay, I've switched the pendulum mass back to the original control mass, which was 50. Um, we're going to keep the same control amplitude of 20 degrees. I've now changed the string length to about 10 centimeters, approximately. Okay, so we're going to, again, time this. Take our protractor, pull it back to 20 degrees. Start timing when I release. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, stop. Okay, we're gonna run that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 stopped watches. Okay. You'll have that total time for 10 cycles. Make sure you're, again, you're converting it to frequency and period. Okay, we're gonna change the length of the string one more time. Okay, I've now changed the length of the string the other way to make it longer. It's about 35 centimeters, so you can write that down. But the length of the string now is gonna be 35 centimeters. We're going to pull the pendulum back 20 degrees. And then you're gonna start the timer and stop it when I hit 10, okay? Ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Okay. I'm going to do that one more time. So make sure you copy down that time. Okay, twenty degrees, and go. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, copy that down. Take the average of the two that we just did. Okay, for each of the times that you have, you have several of them, make sure you're calculating the frequency and period for each of the averages that you got. So take a look again we had, to, we had a total time for 10 swings. That total time is neither the frequency nor the period for, e, uh, for each parts of your data. So make sure you can um, calculate the frequency and period for each. Okay and then just follow along now that you have your data for this. You'll have to uh, set up a data table showing the trials and variables for each of um, your experiments. For each of your data tables, make sure you include the control test in each of your three tables. So you'll have three tables. Your control test will be in each part of the table and make sure you're showing a trend for each of your tables, sort of an increasing trend. So for the first one where we changed the um, amplitude, make sure you're 20 degree amplitude sort of is first, that's your control. Your 40 degree amplitude is next, and then your 60 degree amplitude is after that. For the second one, for the second experiment that we did, we changed the mass, okay? So your control again is going to be um, at the top of that table, the first um, row, which is your 50 degree, uh, sorry, your 50 gram mass. And then we did 100 grams, and then we did um, 200 grams. And then for your third table, okay, um, your control is going to be sort of the second row because we did a shorter one, which I believe was around 10, and then our control, which was about 20. So make sure your control for that one goes to the middle of your table. And then the last one will be the, um, the long one, which was 35 centimeters.